Good evening and welcome to another episode of Game Wisdom Examined. I am Josh Bicer, and tonight we are playing one of my favorite games from 2014, and that is Dungeon of the Endless. This is a roguelike slash tower defense game from Amplitude Studios. They've made some other titles in like the strategy and forex genre. And this is a game that I really like to play because it's another great game for streaming due to the roguelike and just complete random excuse me randomization of the mechanics and what can happen. One second, I'm just gonna lower the sound just a little bit more. There we go. So what makes the game so interesting is that it does combine a traditional roguelike in terms of character progression and RPG with tower defense mechanics like holding points and generally trying to keep control. So let's get things started. I'll let you guys watch the opening cinematic. Okay, just a quick one. The general concept of the game is that you play as survivors from that prison ship who now have to survive on this planet. Now you can see over here we have two difficulty settings, too easy and easy. This can really be described as normal and hard, because this is a very challenging game. Now the escape pod is sort of like your game mode, and there's these different pods that determine basically starting rules. You can see over here, Cannot carry weapons, quick heal, not possible, and then there's different conditions to do in order to get them. So I haven't unlocked anything because I've been too busy trying to beat the game on easy mode, which again is really not that easy. Now down here are all the heroes that I've unlocked so far. You need to find the hero during your game and then keep them alive for I think three or four rounds, or three or four levels, and then they become available. And part of the strategy for if you're trying to be serious with the game is picking complementary heroes, like someone who's good at combat and someone who can hang back and repair. But we're going to keep things random because I think it's a lot more interesting and it opens up the game to a lot of different plays. So let's get going. Alright, there's our escape pod crashing. And while you're watching this, I do apologize if the resolution of the game is a little bit off, even more from my other videos. This game did have some resolution issues I had to talk with the developers to figure out. So, here we are, level 1. Right here are two heroes, and again, this is completely randomly generated from, I, my part is randomly generated from that pool. Each hero has their own backstory, possible equipment they can pick up, and stats. These are passive skills and you'll gain more as you level up. Here's our other guy. So to put it simply we have two combat oriented heroes. We have this woman who thinks she's a spider and we have this one who's like a knight. If you look over here these, let me examine it, these are our resources. You have industry, science, food, and thus. And what's very important about the game is making use of these resources for your progression because all of them are key to how you progress through the game. And this is one of the more annoying things about Dungeon of the Endless is just how much everything is riding on your resources. You really need to have a perfect run to stand a chance at being the game on the easy setting too easy you can get around with it but I'll show you what I mean as we start playing so we're going to select our heroes we're going to open up the first door when you open up to a new room on a level it's sort of like clicking next turn in a turn based strategy game it's going to move everything forward and you'll see what happens first we get resources room is up and we have these enemies in here killed them we got a little bit of dust from that and what dust is used for is to turn on a room. As you can see, I use one of my points. For every 10 pieces of dust, I get another mark, or I can keep another room powered. Now this is very important, and you'll see why in a few minutes. 
Now, in the room, you can see these little nodes and this big one in the middle. This represents how many items or how many structures I can place inside this room. And this is where the tower defense angle comes in. So what I'm going to do, these three creators, or creator, generator, replicator, one of these big modules can go inside the center item. And this will give me more of those resources for each turn or each time I open up a door. Now, this is where things can get a little tricky because all your resources other than dust carry over throughout the game. So if you end a level without a lot of food, you're going to be stuck that way for the next level. And this is sort of where the difficulty of the game comes in, that you really need to have like the perfect storm of good luck in order to stand a chance. So, industry lets me build more structures, food lets me heal and level up characters, and science lets me upgrade and unlock new modules and items I can use in the dungeon. So I find this usually to be the most important one to get second. I always want industry starting first, because again, I need industry to keep producing more things. As you can see, I've now, I'm have now i gaining plus three, or I'm getting plus eight per turn in the dungeon. So let's go to the next room. And each dungeon floor is procedurally generated. So I don't know what's going to be in there, what rewards I'm going to get, anything like that. Okay. So, so far, we're doing good. Two floors down, who knows how many to go. Alright, we found some free science, that's good. And the cost to add more major modules goes up. Uh, successively after each one. So now it's 25, once I put another one it'll be 30 and so on and so forth. So now this is the first time we have two paths. I don't know where our, these things are so I am going to go maybe left. Now it's important to note the speed rate determines how fast units are and let's stop for a quick second and go over these stats. Health is obvious, so is regeneration. Defense is how much they'll absorb of damage. Speeds, of course, speed. DPS is damage per second. And this sort of is what determines DPS. And down here, it's a little, maybe a little hard to see, is wit. And that determines a bonus these units have for operating modules. Certain heroes can repair or augment the use of a module. And wit determines how much that is. So she has a rating of 5. This one has a rating of 7. So that's good to know when I'm going to start messing with that later in. So let's open the door to the left. Door opens, we get some resources. Now the amount of dust you get for opening up a door is random, as well as the chance of getting it from enemies. And that can also lead to some trouble, because if you don't get any dust, you're on more rooms that you can't operate in. So now that we have enough industry, I'm going to make the science generator because I want science a lot because that's how I'm going to be able to upgrade and hopefully stand a chance. Food is important, but at this stage, it's not the most important thing. So let's go to the left again. And some people have different strategies. Others like to open up all doors close to each other. Others like to, like me, like to go in one direction and then go around because I find it a little bit easier to defend that way. Okay, so right now we have a bit of a choice. I either open up this door or this one. Unless I get three more dust, I'm going to have a room that's dark. And I'll explain why that's dangerous in a second. Okay. Found a treasure chest. And we got a sword. Now each character, as you can see, has different equipment they can wear. This one, jewelry, can only equip spears, armor, and a device, while she, Golgi, can only comp wear armor and two devices. That means that this rapier does nothing for me, unfortunately. But I could possibly sell it for dust later on. Now, here's why you need to light rooms up. As I said, when you open up a door, it moves the dungeon forward one turn. Any rooms that are unpowered and don't have a hero in them may spawn enemies. Now when you spawn enemies, there's a chance that fighting them could give you more dust. But again, 
when you spawn enemies, you're inviting them to start attacking your heroes, your modules, and most importantly, your crystal. If the crystal takes damage, it comes out of your dust supply, and when it hits zero, the game's over, you've lost. The game is also over if you lose all your heroes on the floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave one of my guys in the room. That way it won't spawn. I'm going to open up the store. All right, we got more science. That's good. Okay, now is the tough part. At this point, I don't have enough heroes to properly defend this area. So I'm going to have to put down some weapons. As you can see, these items cost industry which limits how much I can have. You can see their damage and their cooldown rate. I only have this one to start with but I can unlock more using science later into the game hopefully. So I'm going to make this my hopefully my defense point. I'm going to leave her in the room to block those spawns. Okay. Good thing we found a merchant and that's one of the events so I can light that room up move her over here. Now what the merchant does is sells items and what they recently or what they did when the game moved out of early access is now each merchant can randomly decide what resources they will take. So this one will take industry and I can sell items for industry. Others may buy and sell dust, science, food and you get the idea. So these are items so the wrench represents devices over here and that's a gun, neither of my characters can use it. And if you look on the right, you can see what it will affect. Okay. So, at this point, I want to probably get some equipment on them. Now, I could sell the rapier for five industry, but I don't want to do that just yet. I may get a hero who can use the rapier. So I'm going to, hmm, what am I going to do? I may come back here when the floor is done and buy. Okay, so next door. Okay, we found some hostile creatures, so I'm going to retreat back to this room. This is going to be sort of my holding point. Now, heroes will automatically regenerate health after the turn is over, as you can just, just see. But if things get too dangerous and I need an emergency heal, I can spend food to heal. Okay. Now, I got plenty of food, so I think I'm going to level up my heroes a little bit. The level up cost obviously goes up with each level, and different heroes have different amounts of food that they'll need. Usually, heroes with a lot of abilities and skills have higher up level or food costs, while pure fighters or brawlers have lower. So, I have enough food, so we're going to level her up. She gets a new skill, and her stats went up a little bit. Same for her. So, as you can see, she's going to now get increased attack power, but it lowers the chance of room spawning dust, which is not that good. Now, as you can see, another big difference, she only has about 400 health, she has almost 900. So this is definitely more of a tank character, well, this is more of like a speedster character you don't want to run into a room with, but have in there to take on enemies while someone else is distracting. And one thing you're going to see probably in this run and other plays is that anything can really happen. I've had games where I literally got to the end and died, and then there's some that I lost, five minutes in. So we're going to see what happens. Alright, we found the exit which is good, but this is where the choices come into play. Remember, I still have this side of the dungeon to explore, and each door that I open up is going to give me more resources. So, I have to kind of make a decision now. Do I rush the exit, or do I go for more stuff? Now I got plenty of industry, remember I'm getting 8 per turn, so I can afford to make 2 items and still come out in the green. Now at this point it doesn't make sense to put down a food replicator because I'm going to leave at any point. You really want to put the modules as early as possible and then let them gain value over your entire play. 
All right, open up the last floor of the dungeon. That's really important. Oh, oh man, that is some bad luck, and even more bad luck. The merchants getting attacked. Different enemies have different patterns. Some will target heroes, others will target things in the dungeon, and others will just make a beeline straight for the crystal. Okay. So, this was not good, and I'll tell you why in one second. Okay. This over here is a research crystal. It lets me spend the science I mentioned to unlock new stuff. Unfortunately, it only works as long as there's doors or turns left in that stage. Without any doors left, I can use it. And as an interesting trick, if you start something or start a research on your final turn, you only have one door left in the dungeon, when you open up that door and you completely clear the dungeon, whatever is left to be researched will automatically get done. So this allows you essentially to get a free research and not have to worry about running out of time. Very useful when you're trying to get as much research as possible. So now that the dungeon has been cleared, so I'm talking about the other part of this game, and this is an escort mission. I need to transport the crystal from here to the exit without having it or the crystal holder die. Now, the merchant, I think, died. Let's see. Did he die? No. He's still there. So what I'm going to do is I think I need to buy some equipment. Okay. That's going to lower her attack. Okay. What about her? And it doesn't really make sense at this point, unfortunately. I don't have the resources to spare. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up a little bit more resources over here. Now, Gold, Gold G is very quick, so I can use her to quickly get over here and use the crystal. So you're going to see what happens in a second. Okay. With the crystal out, I can no longer power or depower rooms. Now, any rooms that are unpowered are going to spawn enemies. Okay, he's at she's attacking that. I'll place him in there. Because I want her to basically be keeping these guys busy. Okay, she needs to get to this last room. And also, I need all heroes in the escape room in order to get out. Anyone who's not in there will die. Okay, and hit the exit, and we're done level one. Okay, now the heroes will sometimes talk. And some heroes have a story. And if they spend enough time together, you'll unlock some kind of special perk or special event with them. I don't know if we'll see any of that during this play, though. Okay, come on. There we go. Okay, new floor. Everything is procedurally generated. Now, this is bad. The number of starting doors sort of determines how hard the floor is. You really want one or two ways, because that leaves you with less areas you need to defend. Okay. So, I've spoken to some people who like to open up all three doors or open all the starting doors at once. Again, I like to go in one direction, because I know that way how much or how or how strong I need to set up defenses okay so attack again I'm going to build my industry first to get that cultivated okay now this is just really bad three ways and again I don't know where the exit is it could be this door it could be you know over here somewhere Okay, open up the door. Dead end, not good. But we got a lot of dust and we got a science. Okay, good. So this is the research screen. The amount or what you can research is randomly picked from all possible pools. As you can see, I have a major module I can upgrade as well as these new minor ones. It will take three turns to upgrade, but again, 
if I use this on the second to last turn of the dungeon, it will automatically finish. I can also spend science to re-roll these four. So here we have a repair one. This is like an area effect will hit everything. This one does poison damage. But the industry generator is really important. This will raise how much a, the generator will give me per turn, thereby giving it more value. It obviously costs the most science because of that, but definitely worth it to get. Because remember, more industry means I can put more stuff down, which means I can better defend myself. Okay, we're going to go up, and alright. This is like a random event. I can spend industry and perhaps get additional dust. These things are just never not worth it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I just got 16 more dust, which gave me two more marks or two more rooms I can open. So that was definitely worth it. Okay, I can move her up too. Okay, new enemies. Now, when you have an event and you have a dark room and enemies spawn, the enemies will usually spawn like the same amount for each turn that that room is unpowered. That gives you a good gauging idea of how strong your defenses are. If you leave one here behind and they kill everything in that direction, then you're generally safe. If they barely survived, then you may want to put more stuff down. That's sort of where the hard values come in. Okay, so as you can see, this would make a really good place for a module because it's off the beam path. There's no enemies who will come from this way as long as I leave this room powered. And one other thing, rooms are powered in a line like Christmas lights. So if I unpower this one, it unpowers that one. Okay, so now we're going to go to the left. All right, so this is sort of good. This whole path has been explored, it's all lit up, so I have no worry, there's nothing that will come from this way to attack me, so I'm good. The bad news is I still have two possible paths left. Now the research is done, as you can see it's now giving out plus 9, so I'm going to go back over here and see what's available. Okay. This is again very important, a food replicator means I can get more food per turn, but it costs a lot. One more turn, I'm going to place on the science generator to give me a greater chance of getting science. Good. More dust and an item. What do we get? Rice wind. And also, weapons can come in different rarities, like in ARPGs. Okay. So, do I have enough yet? I'm going to place the science generator right here. Doesn't matter where I place it as long as it's in a room with a major module. So next turn, I'm going to research the food replicator, and then maybe I will get that at my next chance. All right, we got free food. Again, I have no more dust, so the next room will have to be unpowered. But first, let me go back here. And I can also pause and unpause again. That's going to be really important for when you have to make decisions about where you're supposed to be going. Just like in the darkest dungeon, I'm off by one. Okay, gonna go down. What do we have? Oh, good. We have another research. Now, the research or what's possible. I don't think it's random when there's multiple ones, but this means I can research two things at the same time. Definitely get the food replicator, and two turns I'll place down that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is she's going to stay in the room to prevent spawns. I'm going to send her up here. Okay, lots of guys. Got more dust, good. You can see she is really taking the damage because she's not meant to, she's pure attack, no defense. Now this is where sort of the strategy comes into play. I have, what I'm doing is I'm keeping all these rooms powered to prevent enemies from spawning, but I also have to do it in such a way that I can properly defend. Okay, I'm going to place the food down. Alright, we found the exit. That's good. But, we still have rooms to explore, which is not good. At this point, since I found the exit, it, 
doesn't make sense to put food down, a food replicator. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to push my luck a little bit. I want more resources. Okay, good. We got more dust, so I can now open that room or power up to be safe. Let's see. Ooh. As you can see, it can be RAM. This is an upgrade that will take it from level 2 to level 4, which is the max. That is really great. Or I can use science to upgrade my basic weapon. Pepper spray. I'm not going to do this because there's other better weapons. The prisoner prod is like your super basic tower in a game. This I would love to get, but I don't think I'm going to get a hundred science by the time this dungeon is through. So at this point I want to go for resources. Okay. And you can see my guys aren't really doing the job on these guys, they're so strong. And they are just making a beeline for the crystal. Okay, there. Okay. Now, if you look right here, what this tells me is that this is a second way to the crystal. So as long as I open up this door and this one, enemies have to come all the way here. And this type of pathing is very important to get used to in order to have a chance. So I'm going to basically turn the exit into my defense point. Okay, can I get another upgrade? Yeah. Something tells me we're going to need to use our food this way. Okay. Okay, oh boy, lots of enemies. Get back to the defense room. There they are. I gotta be really careful with her health. If a character dies, they're dead for good. Okay, now things are getting really sketchy. If and now I can basically block spawns with two rooms with these heroes. But the more doors I open, the more danger it's going to become. And with only two heroes, I don't know if they'll be able to defend. So I'm going to keep going here. One thing is I've learned is you do not want to have just one room be your primary defense. If you do that, enemies will just completely swarm you and they'll just wipe you out. So you need to spread out your defenses to hit enemies along the way. Okay, we found a second hero. Ugh, but I spent my food. Alright. You know what? I said I wasn't going to do it, but we have an emergency. I need more heroes, so we're going to try enough foods to unlock to get her on my team. I need 34, so I should be able to do it. It's going to be close. Nah, it's, I'm going to be off by damn two. And you see another danger now. They're attacking her. Uh, this could be game over, actually. Oh, yeah, it's game over. As I just said, you kind of have to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, and I kind of went too long. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah, don't have, yep, game over. As I said at the beginning, this is very much a roguelike. I've, I just had bad luck with how the rooms spawn, and that's one of the complaints I have with the game, is that the game is really about not only how good you are, but how lucky you get with room placements. Because a lot of the times, you will die, and there is literally nothing that you can do about it. But again, that makes it a great game for, you know, continued plays and recordings, because you never know what's going to happen. 
Let's do one more and we'll see how different it is this time. Again, I could choose my heroes, but I find it a lot more interesting to go random. It just gives it a lot more variety, I think. Okay, who do we have this time? And I believe the developers are still like doing fine-tuning and polishing the game. I don't know if there's going to be any new content, though. It spent a lot of time in early access, and I mean, like I said, I really do like it, but it does feel a little bit on the brutal side. It's not like the Binding of Isaac where one good item can completely change anything. It's like you need to be on the ball every minute of every room or you won't win. Okay, who do we have this time? Okay, we have a range character. She can actually repair and interact with modules. That's going to be very important. As you can see, she has less defense. This is pretty much a range character. And there's our friend Golgi again. Okay, that's actually not good. Okay. Now she does do a lot of damage. What's her name? Raika. Okay, so once again, now because she has a lot of wit, I know that I actually want to upgrade her as quickly as possible, and I'll tell you why in a few minutes, hopefully, as long as we don't die. Okay, there's our science, very early. Ooh. Okay, this is actually really good. These three modules are really important. This is, of course, upgrades your science. This is a health regenerator. This allows your heroes to heal automatically during a combat phase. And this is a good damage module. This is a lot better than the Prisoner Pride. Okay, but of course, I can't afford any of them right now. But I really want them, especially the Tesla one, because that's a good weapon, and that can help you in the early game. And that's another part of the problems with how luck plays into things. If you don't find any research crystals or don't have enough science upgrade, you won't be able to use them, and then you're just going to lose that way, no matter how much you level up your heroes. Okay. What I really want to do is she needs to level up twice, because this will allow her to work on modules and increase the resources they put out. But again, I really want to get science. Okay, Some rooms can lay up on their own, and you'll need to spend dust on them, which is really great. Okay, Definitely want science, because I want to get the science upgrade. Again, it's all about cultivating the early game to make your late game have a chance. Okay. Again, we are all out of resources. Okay, we just got more. Okay. Another split path. Not good. Alright, so since this room is dark, I have to leave someone in there to prevent enemies from spawning. We'll go left. Okay, we found the exit, which is good. But I still want to use this research and get one of those items. Let's go back down. What do we have? Okay. I'm going to go for the science first, because again, the more science I can produce means I can get more stuff down the line. Okay, and the characters like to talk to each other sometimes, like that. Now, I kind of made a bit of a mistake there. I should have left her in this room in case there was a spawn and would have blocked it. Okay, good news is we got a weapon. Now, as you can see, weapons really can alter how much damage in their abilities. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave her here. I'm going to have her open up... Oh, wait, actually, before I forget, let's get that science upgrade. Oh, 
Oh my god. Why can I never be clear on that? Alright. I'm sort of facing a dilemma here. I don't know if this is the last door or not. If I don't start a research and that's the last room, then I get nothing. If it isn't, then I can get the science. Considering we have two very... Uh, like heroes, those who can't take a lot of damage, I think I'm going to guarantee we get the Tesla module. Because this is a very powerful weapon, and I can use it to defend and take enemies out before they get to my heroes. So, we're going up this door. And I was right, it was the last door. I get the Tesla upgrade for free. Move her back here. Oh, but it was too late to stop the spawn. over here. Got to chase these little guys down. Okay. Last floor, I got my Tesla. As you can see, it costs a lot more, 7 compared to 3, but it does just about almost 4 times the damage. Okay, we got some free food. So I can upgrade her. She can boost the modules, and she can also, one more upgrade, and I can use her to work on modules, which I'll probably show you next round. So, here's our loadout. I'm going to have to leave her here, move her down. I'm going to set some defenses up. I'm not going to put the Teslas up because I think they're too much for right now. And she's going to defend that area while she grabs a crystal and makes a run. I'm using the mouse wheel to zoom in and out like that. Okay. So she's got to basically defend this all on her own. I can use this to supercharge the modules up for a few seconds. And clear. Right? Good floor. But again, you never know what's going to happen. We could have this next play, I could get all the way to the end, or this next room could, this next floor could be my last. I guess that keeps things exciting. But yeah, this is one of those games I'm, I will probably do multiple plays of as I'm starting to get myself almost done with the darkest dungeon at the moment. Okay. Come on, game. There we go. Okay, another spawn. We have two instead of three. That makes it a little bit easier for covering. Oh, and we found a hero. That actually puts a wrinkle on my plan. I was going to use my food to upgrade Rika to get her module, but getting a third hero and sort of helping to split the damage and get more coverage, I think, is more important. So now we have three heroes. She is another combat. She's speed, unfortunately, and not heavy in defense, but she can take enemies down a lot quicker, and she's faster than Golgi. Okay, so again, first things first. Let me zoom out. There we go. Get my modules down. Okay. As you can see, it how much quicker it is dealing with these enemies with three heroes as opposed to two. And I have enough industry, so... Mm -hmm. What am I going to do first? You know, I think I'm going to spend the food so I can upgrade her. This will allow her to work on the modules and it will basically help me out, I think, further in the long run. So we'll go up. You can see the speed difference, too. Alright, we found our first science. The hollow here is basically a way to distract enemies. It works on some of them. But we also have the industry generator. I'll probably place down the science one. Well, I'll probably place science one down in the next turn. Okay. Now you can open up multiple doors, and I think there is a bonus for doing that.
but I really don't recommend it because it makes it harder for you to control the flow of enemies and again you really don't want to be swarmed like that okay. now here's the advantage of having three heroes I can send her up here and these two will go to the left but first can I build science uh, no I need to find a room that has the module so maybe this one Okay. so the science module is going to go down here can I upgrade her yet? No. Alright, so what I'm going to do is she's going to stay up here and basically block the spawns. While these two who are a lot quicker and can get around are going to go and move forward. Once I find enough dust, I'm going to light this up so I can completely lock down that direction. Okay. There we go. I'm going to move her down here. Still need... Oh yeah, I got everything already. That's good. Okay, do I have enough food? Yeah. So now, this is a very important passive skill, Operate. This base, as I said, allows units can interact with the modules and boost their capabilities based on their wit. So with a wit of 9, that will raise up pretty high whatever module I set her on. So, I want to do that now. But I also need someone to block the spawns, which I think may be a little bit more important now. Okay. So these two are now going to go to the right. She'll be in there until we get enough dust. Okay, we got a self-powered room. Good. And another research. Okay. I want to use the one that's up here because it's safer. And I'm going to place some Teslas here to basically be a last line of defense. Okay, move them back. Now what's important to note is that after the door opens, there's a few seconds while the game decides whether or not to spawn new units. After that, I can now move her from this darker room and they won't spawn enemies. You have to get the timing down those. So I'm going to move her out and she'll hopefully get there to provide some help. Oh. Okay. The good news is now this whole side is covered. I just have to worry about this side. Now what I can do is leave her behind to work on one of these modules. You'll see the little gear icon there. So what's going to happen is next turn that number of plus eight is going to go up which means I'll get more resources. Okay. Now again I'm playing things a little fast and loose so I have to be careful with how much I strain myself or how much I put my guys in danger. Okay. Move her here to the nice spawn. As you can see, the number went from 8 to 13, but it will only stay there as long as I don't move her out of there. And I don't know if I'll be able to do that. Build another Tesla. As you can see, just how much damage those Teslas are doing. Okay, there should be some more enemies coming. You'll know when a round's turn. As the game makes like a little sound, all the heroes recover. Okay, we finally got some more dust, so I can open up this room, which means less spawns. This is a specialty module. As you can see, this raises the defense of everything else. This one is really good. It raises the attack power of heroes, which means they'll do more damage, which means they can kill enemies quicker. 
which is really great for groups like this who aren't really about the fence. Okay, let me see. I think I'm going to also level her up, just give her a little bit more as well. That's almost done. Okay, move her here, move her over here. Okay, we got a dead end. Okay, we found a stell. These are basically random events. They'll alter the dungeon for a set amount of turns in different ways. So this one increases everyone's speed or heroes by 100%. It will last 8 turns. So now she is super quick. Okay, so let's see. Now, I really want that suppressive bot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take her off of industry. I'm going to move her to science. Get that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is this will sort of be like my secondary defense and this will be my main defense right here. So they'll have to come this way, get hit by these weaker ones, and then we'll hold out here where they're stronger. She'll stay up here to deny spawn. Okay, what do we have? Okay, she'll move here. And we'll do that. Hopefully this should work. As you can see, just how much damage those Teslas are doing, they're really saving my ass. Okay. And remember, the more dark rooms coming from the same direction, the greater the threat's going to be. So it's safer to really spread out your spawns if you can. Having four rooms close together completely dark means you're going to have a huge wave, while having them sort of spread out means you'll have less enemies coming at you at once. Okay. Now she's working that module. Can I get the def item now? Yeah. We'll buy that. So now I'm going to leave her over here, so she'll deny from that direction. And she's quick enough that she can move back. Okay, we found the last room. Another useful hint, the last door, or when you open up the exit room, will always not trigger enemy spawns. Same goes for merchants and other heroes. Okay, so as you can see, even though it had three turns left to go, because the dungeon's over, it automatically finished that for me. So, where is it? Right here. Cost 8, but it can be worth it. Okay. So what we need to do now is... We need to set a path to the crystal. So what I'm doing is I want the enemy spawn to come from this way, because I'm going to have everyone over here. Okay. Move her back here. And here we go. All right. Now I can have at max four heroes working with me at one time. And you do can sometimes have decide who to take with you and who to leave. So right now I could really use a heavy hero, someone who can tank damage. As you get higher up, the enemy types will change, and the dungeon becomes a lot harder. Now we're not finding a lot of items, which is also has me worried. Okay, what do we have? Okay. Another two dungeon door. Two dungeon store, I mean, so that's good. 
I'm gonna go up this time. Let's see what we have. Definitely find some more defense. Okay, so again, set the industry up. And modules will only work in powered rooms. So if I turn the power off, the module will no longer produce or do any kind of functions. And the same goes for attacking modules. Okay, so she's gonna start boosting industry. Alright, definitely use that. And we got a lot of dust, that's great. So what I'm doing is I'm leading them back here so everyone can attack these enemies at once. Because it doesn't make sense to let only two characters fight. So we have enough. Once again, I'm going to put down the science generator to hopefully, so I can use this. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is place science down. She's going to move up here to augment that. We're going to keep going. Good. Okay. I need so two more turns and I'll be able to afford it. Okay. And when heroes are attacked, they do slow down. So you have to be careful of that when deciding who to run forward and basically open the doors. Good. Do I have enough? Okay, let's put a food down. Uh, let's do it right here. Because we want to get as much, as many resources as we can out of the dungeon. Oh good, we found a new hero. So we're going to invite him. And this is good, this is one of the ones that I didn't have. As you can see, if I keep him alive for three floors, he'll become permanently unlocked and he can be one of my starting heroes. So this guy, this is a tank, you can tell because he has a lot of health, well, a little bit more health than my other guys. Let's see. Oh, he's got the most defense? No, she does. And yeah, well, he's got the most health, I think. Yeah, so he will have to sort of be my frontliner. Now his special ability is he raises the attack of everyone in the room. So that's good. And having a fourth hero means I can now do more blocking. Okay, so first, let's move them back here. Definitely get that upgrade going. Okay. should finish up in a few more turns. Alright, we got a merchant. So this one takes food instead of industry like the one from our previous game. So this is very useful. Okay, so what I want to do this is a 6545, so this is better. So first we're going to give her a weapon, because you can see it raises her DPS by 21, and it only costs 9 food, so there you go. And he also has one as well. Okay. Defense 4, 5, 6, 5. Really want the frag grenade for Golgi here, because she can only wear devices and armor. So, we'll have to come back there. 
okay, the good news, we found the exit. So again, I can either leave or I can sort of keep going and get more resources out of the dungeon. All right, very important as well, adding defense. With this low health party, I really do need that. So we'll do that. Now I'm going to move her away from the science. I then want her to get some more food so I can buy some of those lovely items. So move these guys over here. Found more combat. As you can see, they're now killing them a lot faster thanks to that one item. But she just takes so much damage. Okay. I knew this was a dead end because there was nothing over here. Move her back here. Oh man, they just like wiped her out. Okay. All right. I think we better get some of those items bought. So, there you go. And maybe I'll say that for her as well. And I think I'm going to put down a module, put down the fire one, so this will raise their attack up. Okay. Actually, one second. I forgot to move her there to block. And you can see the difference they're attacking. Okay, we'll block this way. I think we need to give her more defense. There. So now she has the highest defense out of all the characters in my party. We still have food coming in, which is good. And again, what I want to do, probably should have done that before. There we go. Those defense items are really making a difference. Okay. There's another research. I'm sort of being a little overconfident just because of all the upgrades we have in items. Okay. Now is this done? Okay. Tear gas lowers enemies' defense, which is really nice, and the smoking gun is a great weapon as well. And different weapons have different priorities, as you can tell right there. So I'm going to get the tear gas. Ooh, Tesla module. Oh, I don't have enough for it, unfortunately. That would be really great. Hopefully that will pop up again. So here's a little trick. I know this door leads to a room I've already been to. And when you open up rooms like this, it will not spawn enemies. It only happens when you're opening up an unknown room. Okay, so. Take those out. Uh, give this to her and we will move everyone in there 
So what's going to happen, they're going to spawn from this way, and I can just run to the left. made to the next floor. While it's loading, I'm going to mute my mic for a second. I just need to take a drink of water. Okay, let's see what's going on. Alright, new floor. Two paths, good. Of course, that means things are going to be more dangerous. Get the industry pumping, and we'll definitely go for science, and hopefully get some more needed upgrades. Okay. You can see just the difference in terms of their damage output thanks to these increased items. Okay. So I want her to go here, so we want a lot of science. That way I can get those great upgraded modules. Okay, we'll go left. Okay, I'm going to get some more free science. Good. Ooh, free powered room, great. And we might as well get some food going as well. Okay. All right, a cryopod. I can use industry to unlock this. There's a chance there could be food in there or a new hero. Well, let's go for it. All right, I got some free food, great. I'm gonna use some of that food to upgrade Namor. And we'll save the rest in case I need it. All right. We got a science, good. Oh, and there's that upgrade. Perfect. We want to get that. I want to send a hero up to provide spawn blocking. And we'll go to the right. Good. That room is now safe. Okay. I'm going to place down a module here. This will automatically upgrade to level 3 once the research is done. What's interesting is that the costs don't go up when I upgrade. So a level 4 Tesla costs as much as a level 1. So it always pays to upgrade. Alright, we got some enemies in there. Let's see how strong she is without... Okay. She's doing a lot better, but she still has that low health. Good. Now I can build a second industry model if I want, and we may do that possibly depending on how this dungeon checks out. Alright, Tesla's done. Now as you can see, this direction is becoming a little bit dangerous. So what I'm going to do is move these heroes up here 
and we're going to basically create this will sort of weaken the guys and this will be where they will fight because I can put up the dust and the suppression to enhance my characters. Okay. Yeah, it may be worth it to place a second industry down too. Okay. We have 70. Then once we get to 100, I will move her back to industry because we're starting to run a little low on that. So now you're going to see when things get really dangerous. I have all these. Yeah, so many spots over here. Okay. Fortunately, that the Teslas are just doing a lot of damage. Good. Got some free dust. Yeah, let's get that upgraded. Okay. As you can see, what I'm trying to do is just create like a killing floor to stop, to try to do as much damage as I can. Okay. Good. We found another room. What happened? Oh, I moved her by accident. Sometimes the controls are a little thinny. I can't like switch their positions on the UI. Okay, there we go. So, can anyone use that? He can, definitely. A thing. <laughs> Armor, finally. And an upgrade version of this. I can see it does a lot more damage. So can I afford that? If I sell, yeah, so I'm going to sell it and give that to her and I will probably let's see, football whistle maybe we'll leave her in the science and just have her work on that I'm going to level up her wit again because that will raise how much she'll give the module. So we'll do that. Okay. Everyone good? So you can see they're going to be running through here, taking a little bit of damage, taking more in this room, and hopefully solving them enough so that my heroes can kill them in the last room. Okay. Is this done yet? One more turn. And see this game really unlucky. We have a whole lot uh, of pass on this side and no escape yet. What was that? Ooh, electromagnetic pulse has deactivated some of my modules. Not good. Okay. Tear gas level 2. But that food replicator is really nice as well. Those from nine, eh, not worth it, I think. And without finding the escape is making this a lot more dangerous. Place the tear gas in there to hopefully weaken them for the Teslas to do more damage. Alright, this is very bad. We can see just how much of a difference that tear gas is doing. Good. But a lot 
lot of guys in there. However, the buffs from our suppression and dust field are helping us out a lot. And we got another mark. Good. Alright, the science was finished. It's going to take two, well, three more for that. Can I afford one yet? No, I need 35. Okay, please let this be the exit room. Alright. I gotta open this way up just to get a straight beeline to the escape. So here we go. Okay, we'll pause and quickly turn on that room to prevent the spawn. And you really don't want to leave one hero in a room doing all the defending. Because I really don't have the health for a mass attack. Okay. So let's see. Will this actually do anything? Again, I think I need to just keep giving her armor because she's now like my front line. Okay, give her another level up. 41, 41, no. Alright, so what I'm going to do is, again, I can open up this door and there's no repercussions because this room has already been explored. Get the resources. And now, we're going to... Oop. 2, 3, 4... I'm basically creating the path that my guys are going to go. So everyone's going to go here. I'm going to use her. She has super speed, so I can use that to get to the room a lot quicker. But it only works during a regular turn. So as you can see, once also once you've actually, let me pause for a second, once you open up the crystal, all the doors in the dungeon will unlock. As you can see, it opened everything up. We have a hero down here, but we already have four. So, again, I have to leave her, unfortunately, to our fate. Those red dots are enemies, and we are out. Okay. We're getting pretty far, but I'm not sure how much more I can really show you in terms of mechanics. Although, we may just die on this floor, who knows. We'll see what happens, but I think I'll play maybe one or two more floors and then that will call it for this episode. But yeah, do look, be on the lookout for just some general like roguelike plays of this like I do with the Buying of Isaac and Darkest Dungeon. Okay. Oh, this is bad. Four door start is just one of the worst possible scenarios. So this could be our last floor then. Okay, move everyone up. Alright, the up direction is completely clear. Okay, something tells me we're going to need some industry. These three will be going along on their own. So the good news is one path was a bus, so there's now only three left. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, we gotta get the science going. I think I may just build a second industry instead of food. But we'll see what happens. Ooh, level three. 
and we may go for that I need another room to power and another annoyance is that the amount of dust as you can see goes down with each floor which makes it harder to properly light things up and again you're left to the mercy of any dust you pick up and that uh, can really just screw you and it's one of those problems I was mentioning is that you're kind of screwed just by virtue of like dust placements and whether or not you get more okay we got a new item yeah yeah Pilfer, okay. I'm gonna give it to her, but she gets the additional wit, and that raises the amount she gets. So here's the problem: I have two spots on this side. Okay, so we can block that, but now only she's gonna be left to go this way, unless we get more dust. Okay, let's move her forward. Uh, moved them too quick. Oh, As you can see, that's kind of where food comes in as a way to mitigate those threats. So I'm going to move him over here, and these two will be going over here, and hopefully getting as much as we can hopefully surviving because I just need him to survive one more floor and then I unlock him okay okay you know what I think I may have to call her away from here and use her as backup need more dust but we're not getting any and again it's kind of screwing us in terms of luck okay Can move her here we're gonna go this way because there's only one direction good oh thank you we found a lit up room and here's another tactical choice if I light this room up, it means this direction is completely safe, but it means I can't do any defenses on this side, because enemies will not go off the beam path unless you have a hollow hero set up, which I haven't unlocked that yet. So I want to light this room up, leave him here for one more mark, and this will be where I will hopefully defend myself. So we'll place down the dust field generator there and now hopefully we can get one more okay so now we have enough dust so he can come over here and now I am comfortable in sending her back up here we will place the food down we might as well upgrade it as well leaving her in here to block she'll go over here good We've got more dust okay we got some enemies coming we'll move everyone over here where they'll get the buff and they'll be easier to defend okay we got more power so now she can go up here he can go in here and now we have all the rooms covered oh we got a new item a saber uh, yeah let's go for it and give him the rapier so the good news is everyone has a weapon bad news is we have a lot of possible threats and not enough dust to cover them all. Oh god, not good. 
Remember, the more rooms means a greater chance for trouble. Okay, so that will go there. And I think I really am going to need a second generator. Because something tells me we're going to be placing a lot of stuff down. Okay, so the food is done. Probably upgrade someone else. Okay, so now she can repair. There is the hollow here. I really, 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 really need that to start tanking and cause enemies to basically go in other directions. I think that's how it should work, but we shall see. Okay, so she'll go here. He'll go here. Place some Teslas down for cover. Now she's quick enough that I can sort of dance between these two rooms to hopefully block the spawns. Okay. Good. Got treasure. So I'm sort of like leapfrogging everyone around. Okay, so we got an upgrade item, so that's good. Yeah, I think we're going to need that. We'll give the second one to her. So now she's done there. I can move her over here. She's just going to keep giving us industry. And where are we? Mm, come on. We stop the spawn. Good. Oh, another item. So this one, some items can give you, uh, give characters passive skills. So I want to take pilfer off, which gives greater chance for dust. I should probably give it to one of my other guys. This raises her wit up even more, which means she's giving now more resources so I want to give oh, I might as well give it to him okay well, the more less I can leapfrog everyone this way and we'll go down good we found the exit okay Mm -hmm. What do we do? I need more resources, of course. But do I have enough to hold them off? We really need the hollow hero, so I think we have to stay for three more rounds. So, those guys will stay there. I'm going to place some more Teslas down. They'll deny, and we'll go down this time. What happened? Oh, a toxic room, which means anyone who goes in there will be slowed. Now, the reason why I'm not going this way is I want to keep this as a block, so that way I can light these rooms up and basically make this a safe direction. Okay, one more room. Okay, good news, we got some dust and some free science. Okay, again, I want to sort of spread them out so not everything is spawning in one direction at the same time. Okay, I open up one more door. So let's see, if I turn one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I need to open up this way to make it to keep things safe. Okay. I'm going to take her off, move her down here. 
Oh, boy, that's a lot of them. I have to use my food as healing. They have to fight there. How are we doing? Good. The Hollow Hero was done. So now what I can do, turn off all these rooms, two, three, four, and this way, I have a pretty much a clear shot to the exit. Okay. Now that door is unfortunately going to open, and I can't close it. But I'm just going to have to deal with it. They should be able to kill everything from this direction. Good. Okay. Let the game finish loading there. And you can see things got a little hairy there, and it takes me back to my complaint with the dust. Dust is just too vital of a resource to leave it to random chance. If every time you open a door you get a little bit of dust, or there's a greater way to control it reliably, I think that would help a lot. Because now you're just playing by luck. If, if a floor doesn't spawn enough dust for you to cover the directions, you're screwed. No matter what items you have, no matter how much you've leveled up the heroes or the modules, you're just going to be swarmed, and yes, I've had games where you will have like 30 enemies just blanket the screen, and there's nothing you can do about it. And even with the best modules, they will still kill you. And it just kind of sucks that there's such a limiting factor, and again, with some poor luck, another four floor, floor entrance starting position. The only positive is that Namor is now permanently unlocked, so I can play with him and do whatever I want. Let's see. Huh, that's new. Alright. So, I think with that, we've been playing for over an hour now. We can probably call it, because other than this, there's not really much more I can talk mechanically about the game. You should have gotten, a, I think, a pretty good taste from this play. And like I said, I will probably return to this game and do, like, daily runs, and maybe we'll get a victory. At least we unlocked him, so I can now start him. I'm only missing one hero now. And I think... We'll see what happens. I don't know if I'll continue playing this as a regular one. Maybe I will. Maybe that will be a good point for like another episode, just playing the game normally. So, I'm going to save the game here. You only get one save, and then that gets overran if you die. Come on. All right. And there's like a little album, and you can have a journal of your best attempts. I mean, look at this. I got, there's only 11 floors. No, there's 12 floors. I got to number 11. That was my best one. 26 times I played, zero times I won. That's great. There's like a little album that has like a little bit of side stories that unlocks. And more of it fills in as you get more heroes. Or see more enemies. Not bad, I suppose. Alright, so thank you for tuning into this episode. Make sure to check back for more Let's Plays and more game examinations. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. And make sure to check out game-wisdom.com for posts and podcasts relating to game design in the industry. As well as our ongoing Patreon campaign to secure monthly funding to do more stuff like this. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you real soon. Bye-bye.